Amar Mateen was born in New York City and grew up in the sunny suburbs of Fort Pierce, Florida. The son of Afghan immigrants, his family had high expectations for Amar, but he struggled with academics and discipline and eventually took college courses to become a security guard. Everybody thought his troubled youth was behind him. No one would ever guess he would perpetrate the biggest mass shooting in modern history. Before the shooting, it was a big night. There were a couple of hundred people in that club. It was closing time and people were still hanging out. Someone walks in with a higher powered rifle, mows down all of these people. Trapped inside the club are best friends, Lady Anna, Mario, Amanda, and Mercedes. I hear a gunshot. I turn around and I see the shooter shooting everybody, and I just yelled out, run. When he struck me with the bullet, I grabbed my friend and I threw him to the floor. I told them that I, I got hit. I saw people at the bar just like, like going, like hiding themselves and trying to duck, and it, it was just terrifying. It was horrible. I was thinking to myself, I'm gonna die here in a club. The casualties inside the club include Christopher Drew Linonen. The family of his partner, Juan Guerrero, raced to the hospital, anxious for news. The reason we went to the hospital is because his friend saw him get into an ambulance. I just wanted everything to be OK. And I was like, just praying for good news. And at this point, the people outside, they still haven't told us anything, but it's written all over their all face. All over their face. But I still wanted it to be, you know, I didn't want it to be real. So they take my parents into the room. Literally, like, five seconds after they're in that room, I just hear my mom and my dad, like, this is the most heartbreaking cry. And I was just like, it's not real, it's not real, it's not real, it's not real. That's all I could keep saying for the longest time. Like, it's not real. Like, I keep telling everybody, it's not just my brother. Drew was my friend, too. Drew, amazing person, psychologist. He had his whole, like, life together. And I was so happy for him. Like, they were actually, like, live-in boyfriends. Just so happy for the both of them. It's OK. It's OK. It hasn't fully hit yet. And I know it will the day that, you know, I want to call him and I need him for something. He was always there. He was like this big, like, light, this big spirit. He came into a room, and you just knew he was there. It sounds like both of them were excited to spend the rest of their lives with each other. But instead, you had to plan a funeral for both of them. My brother was cremated, and Drew is cremated as well. So whenever both moms are ready to put them in a cemetery together. So they'll spend eternity together. Yes, uh, for sure. When I first heard that my ex-husband, Omar, was behind a mass shooting, I was shaking. Somebody I knew did this. Somebody I was with did this. You know, I never would have thought that Omar would be capable of murdering so many people and hurting so many others. That's the traditional Afghan dress. So it looks like you were both very happy and in love, and this marriage looks like it was meant to be. In the beginning, it was pretty magical. And then what happened? He started showing me his other side. That he would get violent and angry, and it was not something normal. I would look in his eyes, and I would not see the man that I fell in love with. I would see a monster that was raging with hate and wanting to hurt everything that is alive. What was the worst experience that you had with him in your house? I was sleeping, and he walked in, and he woke me up by pulling the pillow from under my head and pulling my hair, pinned me to the ground and started choking me until I almost passed out. And then when you 
gain consciousness, what did he say to you? First, he would start with the laundry not being finished, but then eventually he would get to the fact that he had just gotten into a fight with his father. What was expected from Amar, from his dad and his culture? To be a good Muslim man and have a family and, and kids. He tried to do everything to meet his father's expectations, but I don't think that he did. His happiest moments were when he was flamboyant, when he was singing and looking in front of the mirror and dancing and taking pictures of himself. And his father would really yell at him to be more manly. Like he could never be free to be who he is. To this day, investigators still have not determined Amar Mateen's true motives to why he gunned down 49 innocent people and wounded 53 at the Pulse nightclub. In his phone call to 911 on the night of the shooting, Mateen tied himself and his actions to ISIS. But in the days that followed, other theories begin to surface. Omar Mateen, who attacked a gay nightclub here in Orlando, uh, may very well have been a frequent uh, user of gay dating apps and may have been a frequent visitor to that gay bar himself over the past several years, quoting the Washington Post, quoting several witnesses who say they saw him on the apps or at the bar multiple times. The FBI's investigation found no evidence to confirm these reports. But the shootings undeniably heightened tensions for both the Muslim and the gay communities. Now, two weeks after the shootings, two people at the epicenter of the tragedy are about to meet in hopes of finding common ground. I'm feeling nervous, but at the same time, I'm looking forward to some resolution and some healing. It's good to see you. Mm. All right, are you ready? Because I know it takes a lot of courage to do this today. Wanna follow me? Okay. I do feel waves of anger, but I do believe this is something my brother would have wanted me to do. This is Satora. Ariam. So Tori, I know you're here because you want to lend some insight into what led Amar to do what he did. What are your thoughts about how he became this killer? You know, I really feel like it was the pressure from his family didn't allow him to be who he truly is. And instead, he had to pretend so much by getting married and having a family he didn't do that because he really wanted to. He did that because he had to. And it wasn't real, the life he was living. Right, it wasn't because even his current wife, he met her online, you know, he just did it because he had to do it to, you know, get the approval of his father yeah. and his culture. You know, what's unique is that Amar's upbringing and the way he repressed his true, his true being is very different than how your brother was. Yeah, there was nothing bad you can say about Juan. He was like the perfect child. So when he came out, it was like, what can we do? Like, we're just gonna love you and accept you for who you are. With Omar, you know, he hated himself. And Juan was a reflection for him. What scares you that's out there? What scares you? All the people still teaching hate. That's what scares me. <clears throat> My family from the Dominican Republic. The mentality out there is different. Gay, tattoos, those things are still taboo. That's why it took Juan so long to come out. He didn't come out until he was like 19. I really believe that Omar wanted to explore homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And for his family, homosexuality is the worst thing, the worst thing that mm -hmm. you could be. And his father voiced his disagreement with homosexuality. Mm -hmm to Omar all the time, and so... He never felt comfortable. No, his father would disown him. That's Thanks. sad. We are not born with hate in our heart. Hate is something that is taught. Meeting you and you being 
his ex-wife and having an insight on him and us sharing the same views about the world it definitely um brings some some more light into the situation mm -hmm. and it says a lot about humanity and about the two of you women that you can come together under such adverse circumstances you know it's a much stronger message than the one amar sent i really hope that this can be a shift in humanity. <laughs> to face the challenges that we're going through and deal with it in a mature, conscious way. You're my sister now. You're mine. <laughs> You're my sister. Pawn's death is not gonna be in vain. I'm gonna use it as a platform we all need to spread more love. We all need to accept each other more. That's the change that I want to see in this world.